Thank you. Um, <laughs> we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as amended. All in favor, just raise your hand. Aye. Any opposition? I think we're good. Um, does anyone of the COA members have any announcements they'd like to make? We've heard from Michael about his pending application. Anyone else? Okay, then we can move on. Um, I think Marie, it's up next is you, you're the director's report. Okay, I don't have it in front of me. So, um, <laughs> but um, let me just, I'll pull it up on my phone. Um, so we're busy preparing for all kinds of things for our soft reopening in August. Um, and um, the list is growing, um, but the letter that I included with the materials um, will be in the August Chronicle. And we, um, you may have noticed already that um, most of that is also being um, put out in constant contact now and is on the city website as well. And so um, people are getting the word of how that's going to work um, and that they will need to um, uh, basically make an appointment. Um, I'm not sure that actually went on the city website. So we made some changes to the article um, since you got it actually. Um, people will need to make a 15 minute appointment to, to renew their membership materials because we really need to have uh, waivers and um, emergency contact information and those things updated um, in order for people to be on site and for us to properly do um, give information when contact tracing needs to happen. Yeah. And so people may think, and people are already saying, I'm hearing that I don't understand why they're in, I'm in the system or whatever. So if you hear people and they come to you and say, why do I have to do this? Um, no, I don't want to say due to COVID, you know, necessarily, but just be that there are many reasons, including that um, people's information changes over time. And it's been a long time since people have been here and we've, we are updating our systems and there are a few things we want to do during this 15 minute meeting with people that are going to make things run smoother going forward. And so it's important, but it's also a way for us to see each person and welcome them back and sort of give them all those materials that we were working on before we closed down the member guidebook, the code of conduct, the um, just the things that we really want everyone to know that um, we put in place. And um, and that includes, you know, also paperwork that people are already dropping off for fitness center memberships and things like that. So they could bring that material then or sign up for their orientation at that time. And we're planning to make this as fun as it can be. Um, we're, we're planning to give a little gift, like just a little, a little token sort of welcome back um, thing. And um and so, I mean, the, the idea of a soft opening is it's really a soft opening. <laughs> it's not that we're opening the door and um, everyone's going to come rushing in and be able to do everything they did before, because we, we I'm not even sure that we'll have hired all of our staff by then. And so we're having to taper what we're doing, but we are going to be adding as much as we can um, that is low low maintenance for us. Like this isn't gonna take a lot of staff capacity, but we'll uh, provide for the social needs. And um, so, um, and- Is there, there's a question, be, what, pausing. Are there capacity limits that are being imposed? No. Nope. Good. So there hasn't been a case, an active case in Hampshire County since uh, May and um, so there are no restrictions and um, 
you know, a lot of senior centers and including ours, um, you know, the Board of Health is like leaving it up to senior center directors to, um, and this, you know, the state basically that to make their own, you know, determinations about how they want to enforce things. But I, I'm not comfortable with making any kind of mandate because it's not vaccines, not mandated masks are not mandated. Um, I was just curious. Yeah. So basically what we will do is like a lot of other places, um, like I did outlined in my letter, um, that if people aren't vaccinated, we'll encourage them to get vaccinated and we will ask them to, um, that they should wear a mask, but we're not going to enforce that. You know, it's suggested. And um, if, and so we're asking groups to also their liaison to check with their groups. And when they start up again, that we will accommodate people's comforts around these issues, but we need to know what they are. So if they want to socially distance while they play cards, we need to know that in order to accommodate those needs. Um, and um, so we, you know, we will accommodate as best we can, um, but, um, and we will do every, we will require that everyone sign in and um, that's gonna be much more important now because we need to be able to determine who was here in what room at what time, <laughs> if there was an exposure. Um, because the more we know about that, and this is what I'm gonna, what we'll be saying is to people when um, they feel harangued about signing in for everything, is that the more information we have to do that quickly, contact tracing, you know, the, the, um, the less chance there is of us closing down because of something like that. And that, that will be better for everyone, right? So. Yeah, I see, Jean. You How many there. members are there? Uh, we have under just under 3,000 members. How many 15-minute meetings do you think you're going to have to do? Oh, um, well, I mean, I'm anticipating that we'll we'll do, a, you know, a couple hundred at least in the first few weeks of August. But, you know, on any given day um, when we were open before, we would have between, you know, 150 and 300 people in the building throughout the whole day. And so, um, and if not everyone comes five days a week, you know, yeah. um, I, I would have to pull a report to, um, really to know exactly um, what it might look like. But uh, what I'm finding from other senior centers uh, directors is that um, it may be different for us because we're opening later, but that people have been really anxious to get the doors open and then they're sort of trickling in. Well, so, you'll, you'll find out soon enough, right? Yeah, and it's it's gonna really depend on people's comfort level. And um, so we will be um, providing activities for, for people who aren't ready to come back in too online. Um, so um, yeah, there's there's a lot of layers to this, um, yeah, so, and um, anyway, I just wanted to officially welcome Janet too. And um, um, so Janet, um, I don't know if you wanna just, if you wanna say anything about your background, but I mean, I just wrote a little bit in my July article, which I think you read, but, um, but, um, you, you want anything you want to say is fine. <laughs> my phone, my phone about to die too. Oh, everybody, sorry, we're all laughing here because all of our phones are dying and we're all, I'm sitting here on the floor cross-legged with my phone <laughs> plugged in and the answer just came in. So sorry about all the, the <laughs> craziness in this first day, my goodness. Um, but I'm very happy to be here. Um, I do have many years in, in elder care um, that kind of got my start out of college in, in um, elder care and actually was, was the first person hired in the state to do outreach with the last elders in Northampton State Hospital and, and was kind of a, a grand experiment to kind of get those last folks out of there and in an outreach program in the community. Um, and uh, it was a wonderful experiment because it, it, uh, it was very successful and they, I 
kind of taken those folks with me in every place I've gone since that first experience right out of college. Um, but I've done a lot of work in adult day health programming, um, in um, adult foster care programming in the community. My most recent um, program that I just came from was I was a program director for a, a, a traumatic brain injury program through the state head injury program, which served everybody from 22 and over, but really the average age of most of the folks was, was in their mid sixties. Um, and we had quite a few, you know, uh, older folks and, um, but elder services is my love. So I'm glad to be back in the fold and the mix. And I'm very excited to be here. Can't wait to get things going. Can't wait to meet people, have people come through the door. Um, I'm a very social person. So I think uh, I'll get to know everybody soon enough and I can't wait, happy to be. Maybe on day four, they'll give you a chair. Yeah, I know, here we are. Actually, my office looks great already. It's just so funny. I, I last, I, you know, I realized I was like, oh, we're doing a Zoom. I don't have a, I don't have a microphone. I don't have a, a you know, a um, camera. It's like so quick, download it to my phone. And then all of a sudden I realized I have 10% power. <laughs> so I'm running around. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we yeah, all feel that way. We're, we're all feeling a little, yeah, a little yes. disheveled, but we'll be a little more organized next time around. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've only been back in the office since last Thursday, so. Um, uh, welcome, Janet, again, welcome. We're really happy to have you in the, th in the club. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so let's see, the rest of my report. Um, uh, I lost it. I, I've, got, I've got a thing in front of me, if you want, that'll help. You were going to give us an update on building upgrades? Oh, uh, yeah. Schedule fundraising? Yeah, so um, one exciting thing is that the Friends Group received a check for $5,000 wow. yesterday. So that's exciting. Um, and then the um, shredding event will happen on the 31st. And, you know, we're, we're talking about other kinds of things we might add, um, you know, after that um, as, you know, ways to draw people's attention. But um, the building upgrades, um, I did see central services here, um, this week getting a quote on, from the painting contractor. So, um, you know, it's possible that, uh, that may go through before the carpeting contract bid process happens, which is good because they were going to do it all together. And, um, so it's possible that the work will happen um, in different time periods and um, we don't know when it's gonna happen. So it just, it made sense to open up um, in, a, in a soft, you know, have a soft opening in August. And then we will probably um, either just close the lobby and have the fitness center open and things going on in the hallway um, rooms, the classroom and, and the activity room if we have, to close the lobby to for the work to be done either that or it'll get closed over a weekend but we'll do our best to to make that less disruptive than as least disruptive as it can be marie is the painting going to be done by the city no no oh no it's uh yeah no um they have to contract this work out even the painting yeah yeah, I mean, they'll have to be scaffolding and things like that. So um, they only do real small painting jobs, actually. Um, yeah, so, you know, I don't, I, I hope to have more information soon. But um, anyway, the, um, the committee, you know, will meet with the architect sometime in the next couple of weeks. And um, go over the, the samples that are being put together by the designer. Um, so at least we'll have some, some interior um, sort of color choices um, and um, that will move forward. But, and the front desk will get modified. I just don't know when, <laughs> um, you know, just, just that one left side of the desk will get lowered. So there's not a wall. Um, and what else is on my agenda? <laughs> Hiring schedule. Yeah. So I'm hoping that those uh, four positions, two, three staff assistants that will be full-time 
and one principal clerk at reception. Uh, well, that those jobs will get posted um, this week, if not early next week. Um, and then we will um, hope to get a lot of applicants, but that has been not the case. Um, I'm hearing from HR, so it may take a while. Um, they said that I, I. They said that in in times when they were normal times, we they'd get you know, I would get 150 applicants. Sometimes they get 300 applicants. Now they're getting like six. So um, it's a strange time. But when when people start sending their kids back to school in September, I think things will pick up. Um, so we'll be gauging, you know, some things on that process, you know, um, about how much we we up our scale up our uh, functioning here in terms of programming. Um, is this a good time to bring up the, the, the what I what I I wanted to discuss the um, art um, gallery? Sure. And so um, we have an artist that you know, that it, it, so far is set up just to show um, virtually in, in August. And, uh, and, you know, it seems to me, and I, and, um, I, I already um, did say this to Nancy, that um, it, it would probably be up to her whether she wanted to schlep some um, of her paintings down to hang them, but that I didn't imagine we'd be having an opening and, uh, and um, that I didn't, and and that it, I don't think she'd get a lot of foot traffic in the month of August. So I'm not sure. I mean, it would be up to her whether she wanted to 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 go through that effort. But then there's September, and um, in September, um, since you know, I, I just felt as if it, it might be a nice a nice thing to have have someone's art be hung in person. And I wondered um, what the hours would be for, you know, it's just 12 to four now. And I didn't yeah. know, um, I didn't know. And I, I, until, you know, this discussion, I wasn't sure whether people, we would be able to have an opening um, and at, at, what, at what time during the day and whether we were gonna continue to, cause I saw the Arts Night Out is starting again. Yeah, so if we could do Arts Night Out, we would, we would do that. Um, and we, whether the we haven't yet decided about the hours because we don't know yet enough to make that decision like we don't have staff we don't know when staff will be coming on mm -hmm. we really have to have staff assistance on because they're the ones who cover evenings and weekends right i mean we can cover them uh, but but we may not be ready to take on um Our a lot but, in september but, yeah, I just, I haven't made that decision yet. Um, and there's a lot of factors involved in making that decision. And so, but I do think that we could be open for Arts Night Out and we could have, I think it'd be great to have an artist in the gallery for September. Okay, then I, I'll let her know that temper, for at least for now, that that's the plan. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I think okay. that it doesn't make sense to not hang art in the hallway and, and it will make it more cheerful here and great. Um, so great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then um, Nancy, was there other things you wanted to update the board on? Oh, we can't hear you. Okay, there I am. Yeah, so we're starting to kind of put together the grid of, of activities and slowly ramping up for folks to come back. Uh, we do have uh, the liaisons for each of the group that, that I have been in contact with for almost all of the groups. There are a few groups, liaisons that have not gotten back to me. Uh, but for the most part, I'd say nine, about 90% of the groups that were here before want to come back. Uh, so that's great. Um, and so we're gonna do the best we can about accommodating everyone who wants to come back. Uh, is everyone gonna get their exact same time slot? No, uh, we'll try the best we can, but not everybody's gonna get their 
their exact same, same time slot back again. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll just do the best we can. Uh, I'm just looking at the grid as we're, as I'm talking to you, um, you know, it's, it's starting to fill up. Um, yeah, and, and so we'll, we're just kind of taking it slowly. Everyone who is going to be kind of coming back to an activity will have to have already done their paperwork, had their new photo taken, all of that. So, you know, that's why we're also leaving the month of August to let people get all of that accomplished. And then slowly over the month of September, we'll be adding back activities for, for folks to come back to. I mean, I'm looking at the grid. So if anyone has any particular question, um, you know, ask away. But you say, Nancy, when you say grid, what do you mean, the schedule? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking up at the big whiteboard here. So the schedule, like schedule of activities. Of, yeah, of, of our main activities, obviously, you okay. know, like our main groups that were here before, that were here consistently. Uh, so we wanna get those kind of settled first and then we'll start ramping up other programs like adding back in, you know, a watercolor class, a French class, a Spanish class, all those kinds of other things. But talking about, you know, like the main groups that were here uh, regularly every week, we need to get those settled back into this grid first. Great, thank you, that's great. And, and there will be, um, there are gonna be some support groups and things starting pretty quickly, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yep, some support groups coming back pretty quickly as well too, yep. How will we let people know that they have to schedule an appointment and can the board help at all in getting that out? Yeah, so that's going to go out in constant contact, our weekly e-blast this week, and it will probably go out on uh, Facebook tomorrow as well. Um, and so we'll start taking those appointments. Uh, the I think it's August 2nd is a Monday. So folks can call or email to get an appointment uh, that will be starting um, you know, they can get an appointment starting August 2nd. Um, can the board help with that? I don't know, Marie, that's, I guess, a question for you. Well, I mean, if people ask you, I think you should just tell them um, that, that that's what they need to do. I mean, we really want people to know that and not just show up at the door and be told right. that they have to do this process and they can't come and play pool or you know, they might just show up thinking they can just come in and start doing stuff. and. Right. Um, so um, I'll, I, I'm gonna update what's on the city website so that that piece is included because I think we hadn't made clear determinations. We just told people they're gonna have to do paperwork but we hadn't said you have to call and make an appointment. Um, so we're gonna add that. So I think it's safe to assume that a lot of people are gonna show up and wanna get mm -hmm. in and I guess, you know, is there a plan B? Do you, are you able to build in some capacity for someone who's here I am rather than having to tell them to go home. Yeah, we, we, we will do our best to do that. I mean, what we're thinking is that we will, um, if we can um, utilize some volunteers who want to move into the ambassador uh, role as a greeter ambassador, um, you know, giving tours, helping people on board for membership and things like that, that um, we're going to be reaching out to some of um, our volunteers um, who were here before and see if they're interested in that role. And then if we can get those people trained, we will, yeah, we will, um, we'll utilize them in this process too, Great. especially if we don't have staff assistance on. I think that's what Jean was asking earlier. Is there a role and perhaps if anyone on the board is interested in helping out with that role, they should contact who? Yeah. Yeah, we could certainly use help, um, and but and um, I don't want to turn any help away. I just I want to stress that um, we really want to onboard new people in this role too, and it's a great way sure. to train them. So um, if um, we can, if we can get, we we are going to be doing this from nine to two every day of the week. Um, and so that's a lot of appointments. I think we'll probably be able to, to um, and we will have not just one appointment each hour or anything like that. It'll be every 15 minutes and there may be five people. If we have five volunteers who can, it could be five, 
five people are getting done every 15 minutes if we had enough volunteers, right? So uh, I think we'll be able to do a lot of people. Is so, it possible that, is it possible if someone comes to, 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 without understanding that they need to have made an appointment for that, is it possible that what they could do is just confirm their personal information and make an appointment at that point to, so that they could, could enter the senior center and, and, and go well, forward? Well, if we start doing point. that, we don't, we, then we have to, so it's important that we have waivers signed, we have a new picture, mm. they have a scan card, they, they are trained how to use the kiosk to sign in. Otherwise, basically what we have is a bunch of people who are halfway oriented. And, and so it's very quick, it might even be five minutes. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to get everybody done, even if they show up, it's just that we want people to make appointments. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because, I guess it was, because then it was, we can calibrate how many people show up at a time. Yeah. So it sounds yeah. like you've got plans in place. It also sounds like it might be some board members who might be interested in being ambassadors. My question is, who should they let know? You, Janet, what's the... What's, I think Janet, yeah, that's okay. Janet's role as so the that, volunteer coordinator. And um, we all volunteers are going to have to fill out new paperwork and we yeah. have to run quarries. And, and then the same goes for the gym. You know, people are saying, well, I already know how to use the machines. And we have always had a policy that people have to get reoriented on the machines for safety if they have been away from the fitness center for eight months. And um, also, I just want to make sure that everyone um, gets all that um, orienti orienting now. And we're going to have a really fresh start with everything, all our ducks in a row. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, that's me, really what we need I right. mean we haven't been able to get people to sign waivers we've put them on my senior center and said you know it comes up when they come in and it says you need to electronically sign this waiver and people have refused and so um we have we have to get these things in place now especially because we need to protect people and if somebody you know um isn't willing uh, isn't willing to come in this building and um, be responsible for their own safety around their comfort. We need to know that. Um, I, think, I think it sounds like you guys have got a lot of plans. I think for me, it's like, these are the guidelines under which we're able to reopen. And every organization does this. Of course, absolutely. Every, I mean, every time you go to the doctor, they ask you yeah. and I don't about think your address and your phone number. And, you know, right. so it's it's just... It makes sense and it people will resent it, but it, it is going to be very quick and painless. Well, and we're going to try to make it fun. Yeah. Well, and it should no need to be anyone should be defensive about it either. Um, it's you know it's the way to open. Jerry Ann, you had a question. Yeah, I have a, a question for Nancy. When when you say groups, um, are you talking about the one even the ones that are kind of autonomous from the senior center. I don't want to name any names, but you know, like the pool players or the bridge players or- no, they're not autonomous. <laughs> they, well, they belong they, to us. They, but they're not, they don't really affiliate with us. They just come <laughs> in and use our space. So, I mean, they're, I don't, uh -huh. I, I'm just curious if that's what you're saying, you're plugging into this, this grid. Yeah, so I'm plugging in what I'm calling the groups that are here on a regular basis. Groups that come in to play like Canasta regularly, uh, Pitch regularly, Bridge regularly, Mahjong regularly. Um, yeah, everything. Support you know, groups. all of those kinds of things yeah. as opposed to the ongoing other programs that change on a regular basis. Like we don't always have a Spanish class or we don't, always have a you know ukulele class those things haven't been plugged into the grid yet because those are uh those will start getting scheduled as we are able to open uh more fully etc but i'm talking about just trying to get the things that are regular ongoing weekly uh programs that happen here get those groups you know the groups that have a liaison um is what i'm really talking about yeah. Um, 
And that, so, that's a piece that's been difficult in the past that like the liaison may not want to be a liaison anymore, but right. we have to have one because it's too hard to communicate with one whole group. We right. need one person who is sort of the mediator between us and the group. Otherwise we have, you know, we have situations um, where the whole group's just demanding to have a meeting with the staff person in a room full of people and it, it's just not manageable. Did that answer your question, Jerry? Yes. yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, but back to, we're still in Marie's report. Is there anything else? Fundraising, just remind everyone, the fundraising is for the furnishings in the lobby, correct? Yeah. And some nice person wrote a $5,000 check for that. Yeah. That's very nice of that nice person. Yes, yeah. And, um, you know, I think, um, I mean, I wanted to respond to, to some of the emails that went around with the committee around like reupholstering the furniture that's here. And I think that might be really expensive. And um, we certainly will repurpose that furniture like in our offices and things like that. Um, but um, I'm really hoping to get furniture that's easier to clean and that um, will actually get cleaned and um, and that's more mobile, like that we can use in, uh, move around easily because often we have to move all of it, you know, um, out of the room and things like that. Um, so, um, but I think that the, the architect has put together a good plan and, um, I found some extra money <laughs> and, uh, um, left over from, from our state funding that I think we may be able to get acoustical panels too. And Great. so that's going to open up options around flooring for us. Um, and, we, and we will also be putting up uh, protective plexiglass screens in the coffee shop and at reception. Um, and I may also order that for the maitre d' stand for lunches. Um, but we won't be putting that stuff up in the dining room or anything like that between diners. Um, can you can you remind us which the is it July thirty first the whole shredding piece at Smith Volk? Yeah, which piece of that is is the benefiting the friends? Just the shredding, the shredding part itself. So people pay a fee for the shredding. Yep, um, I think it's ten dollars for. Um, copy paper size box and then it's $15 for a for a um I can't remember what it's called the the longer boxes the and does the, the friends group get part of that or all of that all uh well so after we pay the shredder the 700 and something dollars gotcha. so that's why it's that we use pro shreds pricing because um basically in order to actually even make a profit, we can't just charge a five dollar fee or something. Yeah, like, I know. That yeah. Nice. So, but I know there'll be there there may be some complaints about that. Um, but um, it's a very it's been um, very much missed at the transfer station, um, and they offered it to us as a, a way to fundraise. And so I I think the friends group it's it's a no brainer. Like they should. There'll be another one in November and they should keep doing it every year because they don't really have to do anything. No, it's a great opportunity. I'm reminded of the one that ARP sponsored a couple of years ago. Yeah. That, you know, the traffic was up Locust Street at Smith Folk because, because no one else is doing it. And I yeah. think the more it's promoted as a benefit for the senior center, people are happy, happy to pay. Yeah. I mean, the banks do them here and there, but um, yeah. There were 150 people at that that event. Yeah, and, it's at least I just we know, and it was free. We could have made so free. much money. Yeah, it was, it was a free one, but it Excuse was me. ARP's mailing list. So yeah, Angie. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I was reading here in the, the director report that say that they need volunteer will be needed to this event. How I can be a volunteer? What I have to do? Just um, show off or talk to somebody? Uh, yeah, I um, yeah, we can talk about it, Aji. Um, 
I think I maybe Dennis from the friends group is going to um, help and I don't know how many volunteers we'll need, but we um, we'll need people to direct traffic. The mm -hmm. traffic pattern will be much better this time and um, and to take money. Right? So why don't you oh. just rather than okay. the details now, if you just let everyone know when you figure sure. out what's needed and who the contact person is. Yeah, I'll let everyone know that would that would be, be great. Um, it's you know, it's really it's not it's nine to noon. Um, so it might you know, it might be that you could do a, you know, an hour, we, if we had enough volunteers, each person could do an hour, something like that. Anything else, Mary, in your report? Um, Kevin's back and in the kitchen getting ready. Um, and um, we're building our team back. So it's exciting. Um, and we're getting a lot of things ready, you know, to, to take electronic payments here. And um, anyway, so we're just really trying to get everything in order so that uh, it's smooth and there are not a lot of bumps and a lot of angst. You know, when people come back, we want them to feel like we, we know what needs to happen and it's simple and that it's clear and um, that even though it might be frustrating, that not everything's happening right away that they know what we are offering. You know, we'll, we'll try to add, like we're gonna try to add movies, even if we can't offer lunch right away. Um, and the price of lunch is gonna have to go up because food prices have skyrocketed. So, you know, there's just gonna be a lot of things that some people are gonna have a hard time with, but we're also trying to mitigate that by having backup plans. So, you know, if I, um, I'll try to have a financial aid fund for people who can't afford the increase. Um, so I think, I think what you said, I think it's, it's, it's not unique to the senior center. And by the time that food comes back and everything else, people have become somewhat accustomed just in the course of their daily lives, that life is unfortunately more expensive. Um, it is the yeah. Way it is. Yeah. And I know I'm anticipating, um, I don't know if people read my July article, but, um, you know, I'm just, I'm really trying to anticipate and be prepared for, you know, my staff, uh, we are stressed. We've all been traumatized, right. By being in a pandemic and, and, um, our patrons also have gone through, an ordeal and maybe started the pandemic having a lot of trauma already. And so I'm trying to prepare just for, I think the clearer things are and the more predictable things are, the, the better it will be. Because I think that um, I did talk to the rec department because they, you know, they've just launched all their camps and things. And I asked them if they're finding that people are more dysregulated or grumpy or um, are they just really glad to have somewhere to send their kids. And they said, well, you know, there's some of both, but the people who are grumpy are a little grumpier than they used to be. And so, you know, we're all kind of impatient and, um, and fed up, you know, I think people are fed up. And so um, I'm just trying to be cognizant of uh, where my staff's needs are and balancing that with the strains that we're gonna be, in, you know, uh, encountering. Great. So thanks, Marie. Um, do we have, I'm not sure if there is a report from the interior design subcommittee. Um, no, I think I kind of, uh, we haven't met the with them, that. with him yet, but we're, we should have a meeting shortly. Hopefully it's just that that process has been slowed down a bit. Sure. Um, and we're going to welcome you again. And I mean, Val, excuse me, can you, um, Tell us why, why you decided you wanted to be in the Council on Aging. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Anne, my legal name, but I go by Val. Okay, that's, so that's why I'm, I'm confused. I've had to explain that all my life. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so sorry for the confusion, but um, so that's why you saw the application saying Anne, and I go by Val. So 
Um, yeah, background wise a little bit. I, I have a legal background. I practiced law in Northampton for a number of years. I'm currently employed at Pratt & Whitney, um, but I am working 100% remote uh, where I have been for the last year and a half and my employment's been labeled remote permanently. Great. So, um, and I have a lot of flexibility. Um, so I um, applied to the council because uh, I in the past volunteered extensively at the senior center. Um, uh, several years ago, I was pretty much a fixture volunteer. I um, took advantage of all the programs. I manned the front desk and I um, was really deeply in, engaged and aware of the programs that the senior center offered and really came to kind of know and love it. Um, so I have a huge attachment and um, really engaged in, in um, bringing some you know, attention and skills to whatever I can do um, on the Council on Aging. So um, I'm really looking forward to serving. Um, now that I'm back in Northampton permanently, I'll be able to spend my time doing that um, in, in something that I really um, care about and uh, want, want to see do well. So that's why I'm here. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. Um, so um, thank you. Hoping it'll be a really valuable. You're welcome. Experience. Thank you. Appreciate it's it. It's great. Yes, I think from all of us, we're glad to have you join us, and hopefully sooner than later, we'll actually be having a meeting in person. So yes. <laughs> yeah. You look very familiar to me, Val. So I, I guess I've seen you around the senior center. A bit. Uh huh. Probably <laughs> if she was volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> I also uh -oh. um, served for a number of years on the planning board. Um, so I, I know the, I know the city pretty well. Um, I've lived here for about 30 years. So, um, I do like to spend my time volunteering on issues that I care about. Um, so I'm really happy to, to be here. Well, we're happy to, and we're happy that your job gives you the flexibility. I know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's great. It is, it is great. One of the first things I pursued. So thank you. Nominating committee, we have a report candidates. We have an election. You're on mute, Jean. I know, I, I just unmuted. There you are. Um, yes, um, so uh, I would like to put forward, that's what I should say, right? Um, Cynthia for um, the chair of the council and Bob for um, co-chair. So that's all I have to say, right? So that's a. <laughs> Is there anyone who wants to run against them? No, that's I asked. I sent an email out. No one else raised <laughs> their hand. No. Is that a motion? No. I, I seconded. Uh, that was a motion. I, think I didn't know if I was supposed to move. I, that's like I I, think I, right. that was my committee report. I think that's a mo your your committee report came in the form of a motion. Thanks, Jerry. Oh, okay. Jerry <laughs> and just seconded. And so all in favor of the accepting the nominating committee report, raise their, your hand, please. Well, don't forget, Ben can't raise his hand over there. Ben? So. ben I say aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's everyone who's voting. So I think we have moved to the report. Thank you. Great. Bob, Bob, Bob and I will do our best to continue to... <laughs> Bob's got his uh, hands up. Cindy, have you gone and uh, <laughs> get sworn in again yet? I'm going tomorrow morning. Okay, I'm still on vacation for another week and a half. So I'll be bit sometime in the next three weeks. Yeah, well, and it's up changed so I can actually get to go inside the building as opposed to meeting someone by the side door, which felt so much like a drug deal. It wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> All when you're here will come out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm doing that tomorrow morning. Yeah, maybe I'll see you there. <laughs> I'm doing it too. Okay. Mine's at 10. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm 15 minutes before you, I think. Okay, then we'll, we'll pass in the hallway. Yeah. So um, I think that's any other new business that it's not printed. The one of the questions was we whether there was a question about whether or not to have an August meeting, because sometimes we've not had it. And um, so what's the pleasure? It's come August 12th. So it will be, you know, maybe a week or so after the soft opening. Is there 
Chris question it, will you, looking to Marie, do you think you guys would be so crazy that it might be best to skip August for a meeting? Um, Possibly, okay. but um, I did I discuss it with the mayor yesterday too. And he said that um, we probably should stay remote uh, because um, uh, if we're going to do a hybrid, which would be probably the best, you know, would be the thing to do to accommodate people's comfort levels. Um, there are open meeting law stipulations that would be very difficult to meet. Oh yeah. No, I, I'm at a meeting at all. Not, not meeting physically in person or not. I meant actually it's a meeting at all. Yeah, no. So I, I mean, I think if you all feel like you want an update and um, there are things, I mean, we'll be making decisions that, um, that, uh, we might need to announce it, you know, but, um, I can also, I can also update people through, um, an email report. Um, it's just, um, my inclination was we might as well meet because we just came out of a pandemic and we're just opening and we can do it virtually, but if, if every, you know, half the people are on vacation, then it doesn't really make sense. So the, the date would be August 12th. So is that work for everyone who's on the call? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be on vacation, assuming I'm, um, uh, been through city council by then, but I can certainly call in or zoom from there. So okay. I'll participate regardless. Great. Thank you. Okay. So we will have it. August 12th meeting. Okay. Are there any, obviously there will be updates how the opening's going and some updates regarding where the painting, flooring, et cetera, decisions are. Is there anything else that others would like to see on the agenda for August that comes to mind? If not to now, just um, shoot Marie and I an email if something comes up, comes to you in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we may we may um, have less appointments at certain times because of the the amount of people involved in a specific meeting, you know. But sure. um, yeah, so we'll be making adjustments that way. But um, I think it'll be doable to have the meeting. Perfect. So then we have. So unless there's anything else someone wants to bring up, I think we'll take a motion to adjourn our meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Thank you, Aji. Motion to second um, to adjourn. I think we're all in favor. I don't need to see she or Ben's voice or show of hands. So we'll see you all, you all in August. Um, welcome again, Janet. But well, you'll have a whole month under your belt by the next time we talk. So um, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll a lot more prepared next time, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you'll have a chair. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye, right. everybody. Bye, bye. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good Thanks, weekend. Everybody. Thank you.